But you know, kids will follow in their parents' footsteps if that's what you've got in the house. You've got them contained in the house for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You walk the talk, they'll walk the talk. My kids are making their own millet at seven, happily. Millet or porridge or soaked oats for breakfast every day, making it all happy as that. You know, they could choose what breakfast they wanted within the choices we gave them. So it's that 80 20 thing with kids. Anyway, where was I? Happy paradigm. So, home number one, attitude number two. So check your attitude, and attitude, you know, determines your attitude. I know it's a cliche and it's, it's old school, however, it has a huge impact. You know, like right now, you could be sitting here going, oh my God, I can't wait to leave, this guy's voice is so boring, oh my God, he's such a lunatic, I can't wait to go and drink. Or you could be going, wow, what can I learn here? That's interesting, so when I don't sleep, yeah, I notice that when I drink, I get a hang up, whatever, right? So notice how your very experience right now in this exact moment is completely and absolutely dictated to your experience of life right now is experienced by your attitude. It's filtered through your attitude. You being here today, you coming to OM, was an attitudinal choice you made before you got here, right? And here you are physically, right? So everything that happens falls out of attitude. So check your attitude, there's a lot of work you can do around that. Third one is um, philosophy. And so the longest lived cultures in the world, and again, like I said, I've studied them, they all have an underlying philosophy. So whether you go to Japan, or whether you go to Loma Linda, or Costa Rica, or Sardinia, or Hansa, Pakistani Hansa, you know, locked away in the mountains, for, for decades from Western civilization. Doesn't matter where you go, they have a shared philosophy on life. 